Uh, let's do Old Boys, right? Which is a film that I find quite interesting because it's so it's the directorial <laughs> de- de- directorial debut of Toby McDonald, who was nominated for two BAFTAs for his short film work, um, and it's sold as a new take on Serrano de Bergerac, mm-hmm. which is Edmund Rostand's play from 1897. But here it's set in a 1980s private school for boys, and in the original play, Serrano, who's a very accomplished, educated gentleman, and he falls in love with a woman, but fears that he'll be rejected because of his abnormally large nose, which is very famous, and so he just decides instead to vent his feelings through making a pact with the woman's handsome but not as intellectually gifted suitor so that he decides that he'll write all this man's love letters for him, which is a completely normal, healthy way to react to possible rejection. (laughs) But that's conversation for another day. But in Old Boys, the Serrano of the film is Alex Lothar's Amberson, who is not so concerned with his nose. It's more about the fact that to put it bluntly, he is a bit of a nerd. <laughs> and so in that one simple change, it's really interesting. Suddenly, the whole film is just your typical teen rom-com because, you know, we see those kinds of plots over and over again. The film where someone is infatuated with someone, so they pretend to be somebody else, try and trick them to fall in love with them in some way. I could find you five films on Netflix right now that have that plot. And I know because I watched um, Sierra Burgess is a Loser the other day, which has a very, very similar plot to this with the, the deception element. And I don't really say this as as a criticism of old boys. I say it more that I think the the idea of selling it as a Serrano de Bergerac adaptation almost doesn't it just doesn't add anything to the story. Yeah. Outside of this, you know, unintentional realization that pretty much all modern rom coms are, are are coming from this same tradition all the way back to the theatrical comedic farces. You know, we've always been interested in the same kinds of stories of these stories of of deceit and missed, you know, communications. It's it's all so similar. Uh, but what I do think actually makes old boys stand out a little bit is the way that it deals with the environment, this 1980s uh, private school for boys, and the way that it, it delivers this quite smart satire of that environment and this sort of cult of wealth and machismo that can arise out of that environment where, you know, entitlement is a celebrated trait. And so you have the hazing and you have the chance and you have all these weird traditions, which is where I feel like my non-British background might have been uh, a bit of a disadvantage here because I actually couldn't tell what was real and what was made up for the that's film. That's great. I love but I str- but that's But that's good in terms of like, wow, yeah. we play this at school in England? There is a game in the film called Streamers, which is kind of like <laughs> rugby, except it's in a river. You have so to climb funny. up a wall and then throw a ball at a tree stump. And that's how you win points. And I just wasn't quite sure whether it was real. I was like, this is plausible. This could be real. And I have since learned that it's not real, right? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I read thought that the same not. thing and I only, I'm only from up the road. I think I read that it's not real, but I was like very much questioning it. But so the character of Winchester, played by Jonah Howard King, naturally excels at the streamers game because he comes from a long line of streamers captains. (laughs) And he is playing the role of the handsome but not so intellectually gifted suitor, described in the film as a Labrador in trousers, which I think is very accurate. (laughs) And he is incapable of understanding that there are people who have never been on a skiing trip. And it's in this quite good clip. So, 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 um, so have you, you've had girlfriends before? Me? The Mighty Winch? Uh, yeah. Ish. I mean, I met a girl skiing once. You know the thing after the skiing? Never been skiing. You're joking. That's just you being funny and peculiar, right? Do you think I'm peculiar? The Apre ski. Ugh, what a shocker. I mean, she'd bang on about her family, her friends, her school, her clothes, her diet, her dog, her feelings. Good God. I mean, power to her. I'm just not up to the job. (laughs) And so the target of both of these boys' affections is Agnes, played by Pauline Etienne, who is French and she is the daughter of the school's new French teacher. He's very funny. And she very much has this vibe like she stepped out of a Nouvelle Vague (laughs) film because her idea of courtship is to send home videos where she's brandishing signs like Bob Dylan and declaring, take me to the moon. Um, And so it 
it what it however like with her character doesn't quite feel like the ma- pixie manic pixie dream girl trope because you see enough of her layers you see enough of her internal life that you see that she's just as clueless about love as the boys which i i liked and also alex lawther as well which i have no evidence for this but i feel like he has played every British nerdy teenager in all just all <laughs> film and TV for the past few years. But what he's so incredible at is that he always finds a new way to approach yeah. it. Every single character is different. He's got amazing timing. It's all to yeah. do with like time. He, he's yeah, I, I think he's fantastic. And um, and you're right. It's kind of like he he almost kind of needs a different thing to try and explore. But but like you say, he has brought something different to every role. And he was I thought he was very funny and very adorable in this. Yeah, and I think as well for Jonah Howard King, he he does such a good job of knowing when to lean into that sort yeah. of Labrador and trousers puppy like quality, so that even that character you end up having a great deal of sympathy for. And so, you know, although this, I don't think this film has anything new particularly to say. I think it still it still works, and it avoids all the obvious tropes, and it feels satisfying at least. 